Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to back to a uh, another Mini Cooper video. <coughs> what we're going to be doing in this one is we're going to be overhauling the rear caliper. Now, um, if you've been watching the uh, the previous episodes where I've been uh, working on, on this car, um, what I'm doing is a little bit of MOT prep. Basically rectifying everything that was um, everything that was a uh, advisory at the last test uh, and working to rectify it so that it won't be picked up on the next one. One of the things that was mentioned was um, a little bit of binding in the rear brakes, uh, probably from the uh, probably from the handbrake if I had to uh, if I had to guess. But uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to overhaul the calipers, um, new seals, new pistons, everything. Um, uh, and that, you know that should rectify uh, any problem and get the calipers working at their optimal. Okay, so obviously in order to do that we need to take it off the car. Um, to get it off the car there's a few things we need to do. Obviously it's not just a case of unbolting it. What we need to do first is remove the handbrake uh, cable which is uh, here um, into this little lever. Um, now, in order to take the tension off the cable, what we'll need to do is go inside the car um, uh, and mess around with the handbrake in there a little bit. So that's the first thing we'll be doing. Once we've got that off, we can then um, slacken off the hydraulic hoses uh, and then unbolt the caliper from the, uh, from the car. So yeah, let's get amongst it. First things first, let's get inside the car. Okay, here is the handbrake cable, as, as you would expect. Um, what we do need to do is we need to get underneath here um, and slacken off the adjuster for the, uh, for the handbrake. Slacken off the adjuster takes all the tension out of the cables and should allow us to pull the, um, the ferrule off the end of the lever on the caliper that I was pointing at a moment ago. Now, to get into here, there's a clip on this, on the gator. There's like a plastic frame around the bottom of the gator and there's a clip on it. Um, that we just need to disengage, there we are, like that. And then we can pull it forward. Here you can see the clips I was talking about, just basically levering it in, just so we can get it out. And then just pull it forward like so. And here's the lever and here underneath is the adjuster. And all we've got to do is slacken that off as far as it'll go. And um, we'll, uh, We'll have everything, all you know, all the slack in the cable that we need in order to get it off the caliper. So all I'm going to do is just back this off, this nut off, right to the end of the thread, so that there's plenty of slack in the cable. There's no need to remove all the console and all that good stuff uh, just to do this. If you were removing the cables completely, then it, you know, removing this rear part of the center console would be would be advised. Almost there. A little bit further. And I reckon that's good. And as you can see now, the cable is quite loose in there. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's more than enough slack. So what we need to do now is head back down to the calipers. And here we go, as you can see now, I can actually wiggle that with my fingers, look. So we're nice and loose, so with a set of grips or a set of pliers or something like that, if you get them on there, give it a... There we go, just like so. And that is the cable released. Now obviously we need to do the same on the other side, um, but I'll, I'll do that um, after we've got this caliper off. So yeah, so there we go, that's the caliper released from the lever, let's move on. Right, what should happen with this cable is this should be able to be pulled down um, from in the uh, from this part of the caliper. It is literally just a press fit, it just pushes in um, and just sits there. However, the end of the uh, end of the cable is made of steel. Obviously the caliper is made of aluminium and what's happened is they've corroded together and there's absolutely no way that they're gonna come apart. Try as I might, I cannot get them to free up. So obviously I do need this caliper off. Um, so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna just cut through the cable. 
with a grinder, just hack through, um, and then I'll worry about getting this up once it's in the workshop because it'll it'll be easier. Um, and I've just um, I've just gone and ordered uh, a couple of new cables. So what I'll do, I'll get the cables, um, and now I'll make another video on fitting the cables, um, which will be you know it'll be a nice touch anyway. So it's not uh, not too big a deal. So yeah, what I'll do, I'll stick me goggles on. I've got my grinder here. And there we go, that is it, cut through. So now we'll be able to pull that bit off. And yeah, we're left with this little stub. So what I'll do um, is I will get that out of here once it's, uh, once it's over in the workshop, it'll be a lot easier. Anyway, now we've overcome that, what we could do is we can uh, look at getting the caliper off. So in order to get it off, obviously we have to break into the hydraulic line um, and free it off. Now, the uh, union for that is at the back here, but in order to avoid uh, as, you know, losing as much fluid as we can, um, or as little fluid as we can, should I say, I'm going to clamp the cable with a, with a brake hose clamp, um, and then uh, we can crack off, the, crack off the union to the caliper. Right, now, the hose. What I'm gonna do, these are, uh, these are brake hose clamps, and all they do is they fit over the brake hose like so and then you slide them up and then what that does is it um, prevents too much fluid loss um, absolutely great for this job you can use obviously mole grips and stuff but you need to be careful with them because they are a little bit more um, a little bit less forgiving to the rubber these are designed for the job um, obviously if you're going to use something like mole grips to, tra uh, to clamp the to clamp the hose and I would suggest wrapping some tape around them or something like that you know just to prevent damage to the hose Okay, so what we need to do now is just crack off the the uh, the union at the end of the cable, at the end of the hose, which is just here. And for that, I'm going to use a uh, 14 mil spanner. Now, this is a specific. This spanner is really what you what you want for this kind of job because it gives you the um, the utility of a, uh, a full ring spanner, but allows you to get it over a hose. Um, so, yeah, just just like. So, and then what we can do, now we're on, is give it a, give it a crank, but obviously I need to get it into a position where it's not interfering with everything else. Annoyingly. right all we need to do is just loosen it off we don't need to um, remove it at this stage because all you do is twist the hose so what we'll do is we'll now remove the caliper once the caliper is off the bracket we can then turn the caliper off of the hose okay so that's that part done what we can do now is look at loosening off the caliper take the two caps off the uh, tops of the slide bolts the two little protective caps and then in here we have a 7mm hex on the slide bolt, one and two, and just wind them out. There's one. This one's been a little bit tighter. Okay, so now we should be able to get that one out. 
and then get the caliper off. Right, the first thing I need to do before we can get the caliper off is just remove this spring clip off the front and then the hopefully she should she should slide off. And there's the spring clip. And hopefully it'll come out. I think that slide bolt at the bottom is all the way out. It just won't, I can't get it out of the can't get it out of the um, rubber sleeve. <sighs> yeah, I think it is actually stopping us. Let me have another go. You get to a point where you think it's all the way out, but then it ain't. She's definitely out now. Oh, and there we go. And there's the pad. As you can see, there's pl plenty of meat on there. It's not um, overly worn. And there's that slide boy. Just, oh, it's just jammed in there a little bit. Oh, there we go. That's got it. Right then, what we can do now is finish off removal of this hose and what we can do is just spin it off the hose just like that and hopefully we shouldn't lose too much fluid there will be a little bit lost obviously because there'll be some inside the caliper and there we are that is the caliper removed. So what I need to do now is obviously repeat that on the other side and then we can get both the calipers into the workshop for a teardown. Okay here we are with the uh, with the two calipers on the bench and as you can see they are in a pretty sorry state and will obviously benefit from a bit of a cleanup and a rebuild. Now what we need to do is obviously strip them apart things like the uh, handbrake cable where it's seized into the caliper body I'll have to uh, remove that with with a bit of force probably get it in the probably get it in the vice and um you know get 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 to it um but i'll get it out um anyway other than that what we need to do is strip all the parts off things like the bleed nipples the uh the rubber bushings for the slide bolts and the pistons themselves that all needs to come out um so yeah let's uh let's get on with it okay we'll start with these bushings though we we'll just push out like so Taking a load of corrosion with it, obviously. That's uh, needs a good clean out. Come on. And again. Same there, that's really, really great. It's just all aluminium corrosion, but it'll uh, it'll clean off. And that's probably what's happened with this, is <laughs> that is inside there and uh, obviously prevented that coming off. We can remove the, remove this spring. Okay, right, bleed nipple. I'm using a six-sided socket on this because I don't want to. I don't want to risk stripping, rounding it off, and making it harder to get out. As it goes, it came out fairly easily. And there's the bleed nipple. Right then. Next, we'll have a look at the piston. Right. What I want to do. Is I need to wind this piston out. I'm going to use a what re, um, this is actually a rewind tool, but you can use it to get the piston out as well. And if I just keep winding it out as far as it will go, it should eventually just come off. There we go. 
So there's the uh, there's the piston. That's what it uh, looks like on the inside. That's actually not in terrible condition to be for, to be uh, you know to be honest. It's actually pretty decent. However, I have a rebuild kit which has brand new ones, so obviously we'll be using them. Now I'm using brake fluid everywhere as expected because obviously I've removed the removed the piston. Okay, there we go. Right now, what we'll do next, get all these seals out. Okay, let's lever the seal off. It's a bit crusty and a bit stiff as well. Okay, give it a bit of a bit of a wipe down. Now, if we look inside, we can see the oil seal, which is just here. I've got my fingernail on it right now and that also needs to come out there we go that's the oil seal and again that looks in fairly decent condition and it's actually quite flexible okay now we've got the uh, the piston here, what we need to do is separate the centre of the piston from the outer of the piston. If you look inside there, there is a spring which holds it all together. Now they're a bit of a they're a bit of a pig to get out, I'm not gonna lie. Um, there's no real hard and fast rule on how to do it either. So it's gonna be a case of in fact I want to stick it in my vice, I think. It's probably the the best way. Now what we need to do is we need to get in behind the spring and lever it out. Now getting it out actually isn't too bad. Getting it back in again after we've done is going to be the hard part. So we need to get in behind here. Come on, there you come. There. Okay, there we go. Oh. So basically what you have to do, there's a lip on the inside of the piston and you have to kind of like lever it to one side to get it out. But once it's out, it's out. Get it in, that's another story. Now we've got that out, what we can do is we can separate the parts. Oh, there we go. Now, there's a little bearing on here, because obviously this turns independently of the of the piston, obviously, as you know, when the, uh, when the handbrake is applied. And as you can see inside there, it's absolutely disgusting. But that, that is no longer required because we have a new one in our kit. But this bit, we do need, and there's a seal there on the end that we do need to uh, we do need to replace so yeah pretty much that is as far as we're going to tear this down now what I want to do now is um, obviously I need to remove the remnants of the handbrake cable so I'll get them off I'll just uh, I'll, I'll do whatever I need to do to get that out and then uh, yeah then what we can do is we can give it a good clean now I'm thinking about putting this in the ultrasonic cleaner and just seeing how it comes out um, the ultrasonic cleaner should you know give it a fairly decent uh fairly decent effort at cleaning it up um but if it doesn't then we'll look at something else but um yeah so that's uh that's where we are with that that and that that will go in there we've got a new bleed nipple in the kit as well so all of that is um is is junk now what i need to do obviously is i need to strip the other one to the same state and then uh yeah we'll uh, we'll get them in the we'll get them in the ultrasonic cleaner so, I'll uh, see you shortly, once I've got this apart. Right, <clears throat> what I've done is I've given it a good good scrub to get rid of any loose corrosion that was on the, on the caliper. You'll also see that I've removed the old stub of the handbrake, and you can see why they didn't want to come out, because they were absolutely stuck fast in there with corrosion, I've got them both out. What I ended up having to do is get it to drift on them and whack in until they, uh, until they came out. You can see they started to bend. Uh, I did have to really bray on them to get them off, but yep, they're done now. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to put these into my ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I'm going to do them one at a time. Uh, part, I'm going to put them in for 30 minutes. So, if I take the lid off. Um, don't need these because I've not got any small components going in. And what I'm going to do is just drop each part in. I haven't yet taken the seal off of this. There we go. Drop that in. Drop the spring in. Uh, I'll put that in as well, see how it comes out. And then I'm just going to pop this in. Okay, I'm not sure really how it's going to come out. You can see there's a lot of dirt coming off in the, in the water already, just from, just from putting it in there. But uh, yeah, I'll give it, a, give it a 30 minute cycle and see how we get on. Yeah. Um, obviously I'll press on in a minute because it's quite noisy once it's, uh, once it's going. So yeah, I'll do that one for 30 minutes, take it out, uh, and then that one can go in for 30 minutes and uh, uh, get the same treatment. Um, what I'll probably do, I think, is leave them to dry overnight and then come back to tomorrow to do the rebuild. Plus I've got a load of beer in the fridge which is getting cold um, and it's nice weather so I'm going to go and sit in the garden and drink ale. Okay, so I'll, um, I'll fire this up and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. Right then, here we are. I'm back. Uh, it's the next day. Uh, what I did was um, obviously uh, you last saw me put the calipers into the ultrasonic cleaner on a on a 30 minute cycle. What I actually did was probably put them in for a total of around three hours um, and they came out absolutely great. Now, um, as you can see, they've got a nice silver finish to them. That's because they've been given a coat of paint. But um, at the back here, where I haven't bothered painting because you can't see that bit when it's on the car anyway, um, this, is the, this is the finish that, um, you know, they, they ended up with which is in stark contrast to the horrible brown colour that they were when they went in. So, the, you know, the ultrasonic cleaner did a really good job of clearing up most of the, you know, the, the, the surface corrosion on these, uh, on these calipers. I'm really, really happy with the way they came out. All I did was then um, allow them to dry. I, in fact, I gave them a bit of a blow-off with some compressed air uh, just to help it. But then I gave them a, um, a, a little coat of um, VHT silver that I've, uh, that I've had knocking around. Uh, and I think you'll agree, they look absolutely brilliant. Um, one thing that's worth pointing out, you couldn't see these before, but these are all the castings like BMW and Arte and all this sort of stuff. This was all in there, but you couldn't see it because of the corrosion before, but now you can. Arte are the uh, manufacturers of the um, of the calipers. They, they make a lot of breaking things, uh, uh, you know, discs and what whatnot. Um, they also, Plaster Lube, this is, uh, this is like a, uh, and it's grill compound that you can you, you use it on um, like the bearing surfaces where the pads contact the caliper and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I, I'm digressing. What we need to do now, obviously, is um, look at getting these reassembled. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one, um, and then uh, the other one I'll do off camera. Uh, and then once they're uh, once they're assembled, we can get them back on the car. So yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Okay, so this is the uh, left-hand rear um, or passenger side on a UK car. Um, and what we'll do, we'll start off by refitting the, the spring for the handbrake. Um, obviously, these, these springs are handed, so you do need to get them the right way around. And there we go. And that feels really good. Nice and tight. So that should... Um, allow the cables to reset correctly that's that's really good awesome okay what I'll um, what we'll do next is we'll get the um, the box of components out and look at um, what we've got in the kit right then let's pop it all out Okay, so that is the oil seal, dust seal. We've got two new caps. We've got the uh, the rubber parts for the for the slide bolts to go through. We've got a new bleed nipple cap, a new bleed nipple, and then the seal that goes on the back end of the piston part. Um, here is a new piston. 
and as you can see you get nice and shiny and new and then they give you a little um a little sachet of red rubber grease um i do have plenty of red rubber grease however absolutely loads of it so i probably wouldn't even bother with that okay so where we'll start first i think is we'll start with assembly of a piston um so we'll get all the parts for one piston together these are the little bearings that allow us to you know allow allow this to rotate inside um inside the piston the um the spring that holds it in is going to be an absolute sod to uh get in i absolutely know that that's going to be the case because it was a sod to get out so i know it's going to be a sod to get back in um so what i'll probably end up doing is actually um doing that off camera just because it's going to take me so long to so long to do I, I anticipate it's probably going to take me a good 10 minutes to swear and curse it to get that back in so uh, yeah that's uh, that's probably going to happen right then let's start off with this this is the seal for it and it goes on that way you can see there's a like chamfer to it and it goes on in that orientation so you can't get that wrong Let's get some red rubber grease, coat it in red rubber grease, same around here, get some red rubber grease on it, can't, too, can't use too much red rubber grease, and then making sure it's the right way around, just slot it over, and there we are, that is that, that is that fitted, so that is now ready to install into the piston. I think we'll put a bit more red rubber grease around it just to just to help it. And there we go. Right. Okay. So now what we need to do is push this down into the piston until it's seated. Then the bearing. Then the washer making sure that she's all the way down it should just sit slightly proud and then the spring now the spring is sided the you'll notice that this end is wider than this end and the wide end goes at the top and obviously hooks underneath this lip here in order to retain it all together so this is going to be the challenging part because i've got to get that hooked underneath the lip um and i know it's going to be a pig so what I'll do, I'll get that in the vise, get on with that and get it done and then uh, I'll bring you back in once it's, uh, once it's done. Right then, there we are installed and would you believe it, because I didn't film it, it took about 30 seconds. Um, it's just the law of the sod. Um, had, I, had I been filming it, it would have taken 20, uh, 20, you know, 20 minutes easily. Um, but yeah, it actually went in quite easily on this occasion. Um, I have done these before and, been, and really, really lost my temper with them because they can be a pain. Anyway, I'm digressing. Let's get on with uh, getting it installed. So we need the oil seal and the dust seal. Here is the oil seal. Now, obviously, the oil seal sits inside this little slot just in in here. Obviously, we need to give it a a good lube up. And then insert it into its location can be a little bit slippery obviously because we just lubed it up uh, we're in there we're a little bit twisted let's it's seated correctly and there we go that is it and now we're installed what I'll do I'll give it another little light lube of red rubber grease that will help us get the piston in in a moment okay dust seal just lubing the inner lip and likewise on the inside of the outer lip this will aid 
fitting it over the caliper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to install it over the piston into the rearmost of the two slots. Just like so, you can see the inner lip is actually sat in the inner on the it, there's two slots on the inner one of the two, just like that. Okay, so now if I wipe my hands on the shorts, what we can do is offer this up to the caliper and screw it down now. Grab my tool, I need the right hand side one for this because we're going clockwise. And then what I'm doing is just winding her in. All the way back. And then the seal, we just need to pop it over the edge of the rim, making sure that it's seated all the way around. And there we are that is the piston installed um, in fact the the seals not quite sat correctly I'm just gonna give it a give it a little yeah I don't think it's quite in at the bottom so what I'll do I'll have to uh, yeah you can see it's not quite sat right so what I'll do I'll get that pushed on um, and then we can move on to the next stage Right then, the, uh, the dust seal is now fitted. What I had to do was um, I had to get in there with a pry tool and just lever it in at the bottom and then it, uh, it popped into place. I didn't want to do that with a screwdriver because I didn't want to risk ripping the seal. Um, but now it's all good. Okay, we can move on. Uh, let's get these little, uh, these little bad boys fitted. Um, what I'll need to do is get a bit of rubber on, uh, red rubber grease on them and then push them through the holes. They go in from that, uh, they, they sit in there like, like so, so that this tail piece is at the back. Um, and there's two of those. So I'll get them on. Um, they can be a bit of a swine to get through um, because they, you're trying to force something bigger than the hole through that hole. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, get, I'll get them in and then we'll bring you back and we'll uh, move on to the next step. There we go. That is those two slide bushings installed. Uh, one went in really, really easily. The other one was a bit of a swine. Um, it is what it is, happens. Okay, next, bleed nipple. Brand new bleed nipple. Let's get it in and then screw it down, just nip it out. And then we've got a brand new cap for it. And there we go. That is that caliper rebuilt. Um, obviously these two caps go in after the uh, after the guide pins have been installed. Um, what I did was yesterday I did give these a really good clean up and as you can see they've come up really really nicely there's no corrosion on them to speak of so i'm happy with those they, they can be reinstalled um one thing to note on these uh is that the the bmw tiz actually does state that these are to be installed dry so that's worth uh worth bearing in mind i've seen quite a lot of people um, greasing those um but the yeah the the, the tiz says to install them dry so uh, obviously that's what i'll do anyway and for the chit chat what I need to do is obviously repeat all of that on the other uh, caliper and then once that's done we can get them onto the car so I'll get that one done and then I'll bring you back before we go out to the car. Okay there we are that is the uh, both the rear calipers refurbed uh, and they both look really really nice um, obviously we've got the uh, the slide pins and we've got the caps for the slide pins uh, here. Got some plastic lube ready for the uh, for the reinstall um, just to, uh, you basically just put a little bit of coat in, um, in certain parts of the caliper where the, uh, where the pads, um, contact, 
and it'll just prevent any squeaking. Um, there's absolutely no need to coat the back of the pad in copper slip or anything like that, which is what you commonly see people do. Uh, in fact, uh, BMW Tiz actually specifies not to coat the back of the pad. Um, on the actual caliper itself, what it tells you to do is actually just coat the face of the piston with a uh, with a little bit of that. Um, but it also does specify not to get any on the seat on the actual seal itself because. Um, it can cause the, the rubber to swell, so bear that in mind. Only use a thin thin layer on the piston uh, and, uh, and you're good. Um, the other place it tells you to do it is just in here, on the back of here, just a thin coat just there. Uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Right, anyway, enough of the waffle. Let's uh, get these over to the car. Now, before I, um, before I go and fit them on the car, I just do want to... Do, do want to uh, specify one thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble this using the old discs and the old pads. Um, I, have, do, I do have new discs and new pads to go on this car, but I'm not going to do them in this video because I want to do that as a separate video. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to put these on the car with the old discs and the old pads. The old discs and the old pads are actually... Um, perfectly fine they've got plenty of life in them they just look a little bit scabby uh, that's all but yeah they're uh, they're perfectly working um, and they're uh, they're all good so anyway let's get these over to the car okay so here we are over at the car and ready to uh, ready to get everything installed now as I said before what we do need to do is apply a little bit of uh, Arte Plasti Lube now a little bit to the face of the piston just a thin layer as I said before don't get it on the seal additionally just here and here where the pad contacts and there we go that is the that is the color prepped next what we'll do is just by a little and just on the caliper carrier. You don't need to go crazy with this stuff, it's quite effective. And then the same on the inside. What I will say um, as well is that the uh, this caliper carrier has had a good wire brush in to remove any loose bits or any rust and there we go that is all we need we don't need to mess around with copper slip you're not buttering a biscuit or anything like so okay so as i said before we are going to use the uh, the old pads for the purposes of this video and they will simply slot in just like so um what I do need to do is with the uh, the one on the piston side, as you can see, it has these these springs. Now, if you remember on the piston, there was two there was two grooves on the piston. One that the uh, the uh, seal sat inside, and then the other one that uh, this clips into. Um, you may notice that there's like blossom uh, floating around me, like I'm at a wedding or something. There is a yeah, there is a tree behind me that's decided it wants to lose it all today. Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> that's what you're seeing. Anyway, this pad will simply clip into place like like so just like that and yeah as you can see it's all the, the little springs are slotted into the in place in the uh, in the piston and then what we need to do is um, obviously offer it up before we can do that though what we need to do in fact if I take that off for the moment what we do need to do is wind the caliper back onto the brake hose all the way up until it stops and then what we'll do is we'll tighten the hose once we've got the caliper mounted up that way it won't be twisted and then it'll sit like so right now back to the back to the pads get them slotted into place same with this one and then just pop the caliper back into position now obviously you need to get them the right way around to remember that the um the handbrake hole the hole for the handbrake cable points downwards um, and that the bleed nipple points upwards if you get in the wrong way around then everything will be everything will be to cock right next 
guide pins. One. And two, they were seven mil. Let's just get them, get them in and started. That's one started. Two started. do just nip these up and then they'll be tightened to torque which I will have to check the manual for okay there we go that is both of those installed what we do need to do next is we need to um, get our torque wrench out and then just tighten them to torque and then the caps can be refitted okay so check the manual these guide bolts are 30 newton meters one and two and there we go okay now I've got my spanner and what I'm going to do is tighten the brake hose as tight as I can get it. There we are. I don't think I'm going to get any tighter than that. Now that that's on we can take our hose clamp off and we're all good. Okay next spring clip just there we are push that into there and we're all good right pop the caps over the guide pins and that is the caliper installed now obviously what we would do now is we would um, we would put the handbrake cable in but as you saw uh, when I had to take it out yesterday we, we had no option but to cut it so handbrake cables will be a separate video I've got them on order I'm just waiting for them to arrive and obviously they just fit through there and hook into here but at the front end where the uh, where the cables go in there is a little bit of work to do to get them in place so it's uh, it's worth doing a video on its own anyway what we need to do now is we need to um, uh, basically uh, get the piston into its full working position so what we need to do is bleed the brakes through um, before I can bleed the brakes I will want to install the caliper on the other side then we can bleed both at the same time and then we can reset the uh, reset the position of the piston back out so it's pushing the pads out against the discs so I'll go and get the other one installed and then we'll give the brake brakes a quick bleed shouldn't take too much because we've only got a little bit of air uh, between where the uh, where the uh, hose clamp was uh, and the caliper to feed out um, but yeah that's uh, it'll, it'll be pretty straightforward so um, back in a moment once I've got the uh, the other caliper installed right so I installed the other side and both rear brakes are now fully bled and they work per perfectly well there's a good feel at the pedal uh, and yeah I'm very very happy with the job uh, and as I think you'll agree they look a lot nicer than they did when I took them off um, and they should give uh, you know good service for for many years to come uh, it is a shame that we couldn't get the uh, the handbrake cables out without without destroying them but um you know it'll give me opportunity to make another video on handbrake cable installation you know it's uh, it is what it is it's one of those things that you do encounter when you're working on cars especially cars of this age you know things do rust um and things do seize together so it's just uh, it's a hazard of the job 
anyway guys that is everything that is it that is this job done um hopefully you enjoyed it uh found it useful if you did then hit that thumbs up button leave, feel free to leave a comment below and uh i'll do what i can to get back to you um obviously we've got um, some more videos coming up with this mini as i said we are doing the discs and the pads of complete replacement on this car um i will be doing handbrake cables and um as another uh Another upcomer I uh, just want to let you know about is I will be fitting uh, braided hoses to this car as well. Um, I've got them ready to go on. It's just obviously getting, getting the time into my schedule to do the job. So, yeah, all of that coming up. Hopefully, uh, you'll join me for those. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for stopping by, and I'll hope to see you all again for the next video. Take care. Bye-bye now.